Hi, my name is Justin Schaaf and I'm the founder here at Patch My PC. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Win32 application feature for Microsoft Intune. The first thing you want to do is go to our website, patchmypc.com, go to the download and docs page, and then download the latest MSI for our publishing service that's used to publish these applications to Intune. Once that's downloaded, just launch the MSI and you're going to go through the MSI installation. Now there is going to be one relevant prompt here that you may want to configure. In the event that you are using a standalone Intune configuration and you're not using Microsoft Configuration Manager for the application or software updates feature of that, you do have the ability to automatically disable the component specific to Configuration Manager if you are standalone Intune. So in this setup, we're going to disable those and just do a standalone Intune scenario. Now that the installation's done, we can just leave the launch option and click finish. Now, the first time that you come in here, you're going to either have to use trial mode. So if you do not have a 30 day full access URL, which you can request from the download trial page, and then you can choose the 30 day full access form. And then if you submit that, you're going to get a URL within a few hours that would give you access to every single product within our catalog. Now, if you don't want to submit that, you do have the ability to use the trial mode option which we can see here. So either of these two will work for Intune. In our case, we're gonna use a demo license URL and choose validate. And that's what you would do if you had a 30 day full access trial. The next thing you wanna to go to the advanced tab and choose to enable Intune publishing. This is gonna be where you can configure your tenant in order to publish Intune applications into your environment. Now, the only thing that you're gonna to have to change here is your tenant domain name. So for example, in our scenario, our tenant domain is patchmypc.com, but this could be specific to whatever your environment is. For example, contozo.com or whichever your domain name is that you validated within your tenant. Now, the next requirement that we have is we need to create a Azure app registration that gives us access within our service to publish applications and deploy them to Microsoft Intune. To do that, you need to go to your Azure AD portal you want to click on the app registrations node and then click new registration. In here, you need to give a unique name. So we'll just call it patch my PC demo. Uh, now, depending on your tenant configuration, you may need to configure your uh, account type that you use. In our case, we're just going to use a single tenant and keep the redirect URL default as well, and then choose register. Once we've registered, we're going to want to copy the application client ID. So just copy that using the option there and then just keep that somewhere safe. And we'll use that in one of the next steps. The next thing that we want to do is uh, grant permission. So you can either click on the API permissions in the left or you can click it right there on the dashboard as well. We want to click on add a permission and then we need to choose Microsoft graph. From here, we want to choose a application permissions. So that's going to be a delegating uh, application, in our case, our publishing service, the permissions that we need to create and deploy applications. So what we need to grant here is the device management apps. That's going to be the application management for Intune. So we're going to need read and write access into your Intune tenant for the device management apps. Now, if you want to also use the option, which we'll talk about later in the demo, where you can automatically create assignments to groups of computers using our utility, you would also need to go into the group and give it read writes to all the groups for Azure AD. We then would choose add permissions, and then we would have to grant those permissions. So depending on what you're logged in with, you may be uh, prompted to log in with a global admin depending on your tenant rights. So this could potentially be uh, something that would have to get approved by a different account depending on what permissions you're logged in with within your Azure AD tenant. Now, the only other thing that we have to do now is create a secret key that we would use within the application itself. So we would click new client secret key, and then you would choose a validity period that works for your environment. And I'll just call this key for the description, uh, key for patch my PC, for example. And then we'll choose add. Now from here, you would have to copy that key and you would also want to save that somewhere secure as well, where you can continue to have access to that uh, application key. 
So from here, we're going to go back into our publishing utility under the advanced. And we want to put in the application ID. So that's the first one that we copied. And then lastly, we want to paste in the secret key that we just generated. From here, you can click Test Connection. And that will check whether or not you have permissions within your tenant itself. So in my case, I may have copied the wrong secret key, it looks like. So let me try that once more. OK, so there we go. I actually did not change the key. I just waited a couple additional seconds and then clicked uh, test again, and then it worked. So it might take a few seconds for that secret key to actually become active where it can actually be used. So keep that in mind. If you test it right after generating the secret key, you might have to wait uh, an additional minute or two in order for that to actually work correctly. So now that we have that, there's a few additional options that will be relevant for Intune publishing. Now, probably the biggest one here is going to be whether or not uh, you want to digitally sign the detection method script used for our applications. So we do use a PowerShell script for the detection method. Uh, by default, if this is not checked, it's going to have the PowerShell script not be code signed. Now, in the event that you do want to code sign the PowerShell script, for example, if all your clients require the all signed PowerShell execution policy, you would want to make sure that you choose a code signing certificate. Uh, so that they can actually be signed. And we'll look at the setting that actually uh, translates to this within the Intune application once we create an app. Now, in our case, we will code sign the cert. So this will browse out and choose the certificates available within the computer's personal certificate store. So if you had a code signing cert, it would have to be within the personal store of the device running the publishing service in order for you to browse out and select it. Once you browse out, you can click on the option to view more details like the expiration date, and that will show you details about the code signing cert that you're using. Now, clients will need to trust this certificate. So if it's not being issued from a public CA like DigiCert, and it's something internal or self-signed, you would have to make sure that the certificate is deployed to your trusted route on your Intune clients so that they trust the signature that's signing the uh, PowerShell script. The next option, we can automatically duplicate any assignments from previous versions of applications that have been created through our service. So for instance, let's say that Google Chrome 79 was created and deployed uh, to a group within Intune. Uh, what this setting will do is in the event that Chrome 80 comes out and it automatically publishes, we can automatically detect that there was a previous version deployed and we can duplicate the assignments so for example, if it was deployed to the all users group, we could automatically deploy Chrome 80 to the all users group as well. The next option is pretty similar, but the only difference here is that if we detect that there's an old version that's been uh, replaced by a newer one, you have the ability to even delete the assignment from the previous version, which would have been 79 in the scenario that we reviewed just now. And then lastly, if we detect that there's a new application update published, we even have the capability to delete the previous one if you wanted to. Um, so that's all these settings are optional and you can configure them based on what best meets your needs. Okay, so now that we have the prerequisites configured, the next thing we can do is actually go look at the list of products that are available to publish as a Win32 application to Microsoft Intune. So if we go over to our tenant now and we look at our all apps, we can see that we don't currently have any Win32 applications created. We can see we have a few online apps for the Windows Store, but we don't have any Win32 apps for any applications. So this is where you can actually come through and you can view all the different products that we support. And what we're going to do is do a Control F and we're going to search for Google Chrome. So in this demo, we're going to do Google Chrome 64-bit uh, and we're going to uh, enable that for publishing by just checking that box. Now, if you do want to customize uh, different application options, you can right click on the all products on the vendor or on the application level to configure different options for the way that you want to deploy this product. So for example, uh, if you wanted to close the app before it's installed, you have the ability to do that. If you wanted to, you could also skip the app if it's in use. Um, so skip the application installation if the user's running it. So these are all optional. Uh, you can even do pre and post update scripts. So for example, uh, in this demonstration, we'll browse out to a PowerShell script that's just setting the Google Chrome homepage to patchmypc.com. Now, all these are, are optional, but if you ever did have an environment-specific setting that you wanted to configure for a product, 
Uh, that's where a post update script could do any customization that may be required that's relevant to your environment. We can also do things like delete public desktop shortcuts, turn off self updates uh, within a product. We can even enable logging. So when Google Chrome installs, we can enable the log uh, parameter for their MSI, and you can automatically save that on the client. So in the event an application fails, for example, you would have the ability to look at the vendor's log instead of just getting generic 1603 exit codes, for example. You can do custom command lines, add transform files, for example. But one of the cooler options here is we can automatically create assignments for our uh, deployments. Now, in my case, what I think I forgot to do here, let me just click cancel. I don't think I applied those settings to lock in my tenant ID. So let's go ahead and apply that, and then we'll choose Manage Assignments again. And we can now see that if we click on Add Assignments, whether we want to do that as an available assignment, a required assignment, or an uninstall type for the assignment. We could click either of those options, and that's going to browse out to our Azure AD groups, and we'll have the ability to go look at all the different groups within our tenant, and we can choose to automatically deploy any of the applications that we create. So for example, Let's say that we want to deploy it to the all users collection for Google Chrome. We could choose to make it available. You can also configure different modes. So for example, whether or not you want to show notifications or hide everything. You can even choose the uh, group that you target. If you want to change things like availability, restart, you can configure these different assignment options within Intune. So the real help here is that let's say that you went through and you enabled hundreds of applications. Uh, let's go ahead and do uh, the Google Earth 64-bit as well. So all the same kind of options available as a right-click, but let's say that you went through and enabled a bunch of different settings, and you said, I just want to right-click on all of those, and I want to manage the assignment for all of them, and let's say that you wanted to make them all available to the all users group within Intune. So rather than having to go in and manually deploy all these different applications after the fact, you have the ability to go within a single option and deploy every single application that you enable and make them available to whichever groups you want within uh, your uh, Azure AD groups. So at this point, we'll, we'll just do these two applications and let's also do one more. Let's go ahead and uh, do Microsoft Edge. So let's go ahead and do Microsoft Edge. There we go. Let's do the 64-bit. And let's say we also wanted to disable the self-update feature for Edge. I'll go ahead and apply these settings, and then we'll go over to the sync schedule and start a synchronization. So by default, this is going to be how often the publishing service is going to go uh, download our catalog to check if there are any new apps available, and then publish them uh, and update any previous apps within your Intune tenant that you may have previously had created. So uh, while that sync is running, if we go ahead and refresh, we should see some data start to populate here in a few minutes. So we'll pause it while that upload completes. Okay, so we waited a few minutes. We can see that we already have some applications starting to process. So for example, we can see that we already have Microsoft Edge created. So we can see that it's currently in the process of uploading that application. So let's go back and let's look at Google Earth. So it looks like that one has been updated uh, and completely uploaded. So we can see we have all our properties configured for that Win32 app, things like icons. And if we look at the assignments, we can also see that it automatically targeted that application to the all users group that we assigned as a right click customization. Okay, we can now see that Microsoft Edge is also completed. We can see the upload is uh, done. And if we go ahead and look at properties of that, same kind of thing here, we can see we have all the metadata, uh, icons, things like that. And it's also automatically been uh, in, assigned to our devices. Now, with regards to the option for code signing the uh, detection method script, in the event that you did not set the option to choose a certificate, uh, what would happen is the signature enforcing would be set to no, and then depending on the execution uh, policy for your clients, as long as that was allowed to run, things should still function just fine. But if you did want to make sure that your detection method scripts used for the application detection do require a certificate, that's where you'd want to make sure that you do browse out and you select a certificate from the personal certificate store. Now, if you want to see what's going on in the background, you can go through and open the patchmypc.log 
And that's where you can see things taking place for the publishing of the applications. So for example, we can see that we're currently creating the Chrome 64-bit application, and we should see if we refresh, we should see the Chrome application created within Intune. So here we go, we can see it's created, but it's not fully done uploading. So we can see that the upload has just completed within our log file, and in a few seconds, we can see that it gets committed. So once it says that it's committed, if we refresh, that's when we know the application is fully created and we no longer have the message that uh, it's currently uploading and not available. So at this point, we can see the same thing with Chrome, automatically created our app, as well as the assignments to the all users uh, group. So that looks good. Now, one thing that we'll do for this demonstration is we can see that we currently have uh, a few outdated versions of Chrome. So we did that to simulate what an update would look like. So for example, the latest version of Chrome is actually 80. So on the back end, we're just gonna make a quick change and then we're gonna run a synchronization to simulate what it looks like when a new update is available for an application and how those assignments get duplicated if you leave the default checkboxes. Okay, so on the back end, we've updated the catalog for this demo. Now, one thing that you can also enable is uh, Microsoft Teams alerts if you wanna get notified whenever there's a new application available uh, and that it gets published. So for example, if you come in here and paste in a team URL, uh, if you create a webhook, you can go ahead and test that. And you can see that we've automatically got that test notification from Microsoft Teams. So what we're gonna notice during this next publishing, when the application gets updated in Intune, we're also going to see that we get a Teams alert right as the publishing is occurring. Okay, so in the log file, now that the synchronization is running, we can see that we detected there's a new update available. So we can see that the current old version is the 79 version that was just published. So we're currently updating the new version. So if we go ahead and refresh, we may already see the Google Chrome version 80 within our application. So here we go. We can see that we do have version 80 here and uh, it's currently not assigned. So keep note of that. It's not currently assigned and the version 79 is still assigned. But what we're gonna notice is once the application gets committed, we'll see that we duplicate the deployment from the previous version, and then we automatically remove that deployment from the old one. So we should see that in the log file here in a second. So there we go, we can see that we created our new assignment for the new version to the all users, and then we remove the old assignment. So if we refresh, we should see that version 80 is now deployed to all users, and then version 79, which is now out of date, is no longer available because we deleted that. We can also see our Teams alert, so we can see that we had a new Intune application updated. We get things like release notes for the product, and we can also see things like CVIDs are directly clickable as well, and that takes you out to the National Vulnerability Database. That concludes the entire setup of our Intune publishing feature. We hope this video was helpful, and thank you for watching.